he's a man of mana, which is, you know, the sign of a true rangatira. You can't question his integrity and you can't question his commitment to the work that he does for us as Ngāti Whātua Rake. He's a role model for our Māori men. Ngārimu is the fourth out of all the six children and I think Ngārimu was probably the quiet one, watching everyone and trying to keep out of the trouble as much as he could. Ngārimu shared at one of the Sir Peter Blake Trust dinners how I used to beat him with a wooden spoon and actually broke two on his bottom um, because he was so bony. In our household, all of us were going to be the greatest rugby players in the world. He was exceptional um, as a rugby player. What I cherish about Ngārimu is his humility. Ngārimu follows in the steps of our rangatira, Uncle Jim Paul, our Uncle Sir Hugh Kafuru. I believe that Ngārimu is truly following in their footsteps and leading um, Ngāti Whātua, Ngāti Whātua Rāke and Māori iwi all throughout Aotearoa into a better place for our people. I've had the pleasure of knowing Ngārimu for over 20 years and now as Chairman of Fairawa, the commercial arm of Ngāti Whātua, um, Ngā sits on our board and we have a close working relationship. He has Ngāti Whātua in his DNA and in his heart. When I had my son at 19, Ngāti Mu stepped up to care for my son and has raised him with me. Oh, he's so nice. <laughs> Those wooden spoons, man. <laughs> Welcome distinguished alumnus Ngaramu Blair. Presenting the medallion is Zoe Henry, PhD student in Pacific Studies in the Faculty of Arts. Behold my cool style while I greet the funk with my Māori One of roughing up on my bass guitar My skills allow me break the tension Or the tackle like Jonah Lomu on attack I paid my dues from here to Timbuktu and back Mad if I have my crew up in the house It makes the difference, it is my preference Refer to reference, crack the ill style With my part two to open up you In the meanwhile I still pursue to inject you With my hoariest intelligence So intelligent make way for the native of all Back on your hip, I stop the sun up Just like my legendary And congratulations. Also, also good to um, see a Bachelor of Arts represented up here. It's obviously stood you in good stead, huh? A four-year Bachelor of Arts. <laughs> um, okay, well, what were you like as a student? Motivated? Focused? I really loved Auckland University. I had grown tired of high school. Um, having to turn up at, was it 8.45 with a turd next to you? To report in, uh, I was That's over it. That's a third it. former, right? Yes, sorry. <laughs> um, I was over it, and um, I actually just scraped into university because I hated my last year at high school so much. So first year at Auckland University, um, coming from a rural school with only 400 kids uh, with a 1,000 or so subjects to choose from, and being able to just be an adult. Um, it was up to yourself to do what you needed to do, and if you didn't do it, no one cared. Well, some people did, and they probably, you know, kapoi poi, they, they helped you along. That, and um, shadows, probably. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I remember shadows, yeah. Well, you've come a long way anyway since then. I was looking at your CV. Um, very impressive array of directorships and variety of areas, big strategic operations. What's a normal work day like for you these days? You know, I, I'm, I'm a dad, so um, you have to get up um, and do all of that, as well as try and fit in um, fitness and all of that, all of that stuff. Like we all have to have to do. Um, but um, yeah, the directorship thing is 
Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of a reluctant professional director, I call myself at the moment, um, but you know, I, I have to do what I have to do to um, pay the bills. Um, but yeah, as um, Michael said, Ngāti Whātua is in my DNA, mm. and um, I can't escape that. It is, it is who I am, and so whatever role I'm in, and whatever board, uh, yeah, I will bring that, and that's an advantage to me. Um, and so, yeah, my day, um, yeah, it's, it's 95% Ngāti Whātua and mm. 5% other stuff. <laughs> well, let's talk about Ngāti Whātua, you know, the Orake Trust. It, it has a huge remit when you, when you look at it, broadly speaking, um, social, cultural, commercial. If someone didn't know anything about it, how would you describe it to them and its purpose? Uh, yeah, our purpose is to ensure that uh, we are here forever. Um, that is to ensure that our children and our, our descendants to come uh, can always grow up confident in themselves as a Ngāti Whātua, whether that's in Maunganui in the north or Tāmaki here in the south. Uh, and they can bring them full selves as a Ngāti Whātua to whatever realm they are in, whether it's in the health sector, technology, um, you know, whatever. Um, mm. Even if they're, you know, they're a builder or whatever, they can be a true Ngāti Whātua knowing themselves uh, confidently, and that's their contribution. That's their advantage, and that's their contribution to the world. There's a line in your CV um, about turning the trust and its commercial operations into a, I'm quoting, modern post-settlement governance entity. And part of which is surely investment back into your iwi and whānau. Um, I interviewed you some years ago and you said that that particular aspect of life occupied a hell of a lot of waking hours and dreaming hours too. How's it coming along? I think those dreaming hours are still awake because, you know, that <laughs> stuff still wakes me up. But, yeah. um, no, the, we've had a, a magnificent platform that's been built from generations before um, and it's only just now starting to come to fruition and that's how long it takes. Seven generations ago, the land was gifted, we lost everything um, and now uh, off the back of that, we have held and we are um, in a fortunate position now to be able to make the investments uh, that we need to in our people um, ourselves without relying on government, without relying on council. And that's always the vision, and that's um, been the vision since Takawa, who gifted the land here. Well, this is stolen seabed, by the way, where we're sitting. Um, gifted the land over there um, to establish the city. And um, despite everything that's happened to us, um, and how angry we get as younger people, um, our elders always remind us, no, there was a hoped for partnership between us, the Crown, Te Tangata Tiriti, so that we can all prosper. We'll get there one day. We're not there yet. There's a long way to go, but we're heading in the right direction. I was going to sort of pick you up on that. I mean, as a as a child of the 70s in Auckland, you know, it is, you know, who watched what went down at Bastion Point. Um, it's amazing to me to be sitting here with you discussing asset management and post settlement governance and so on. In the la in the longer, larger scheme of things, um, where do you think this city is in its relationship with Ngāti Whātua? And, and vice versa. Uh, we've got a long way to go, uh, to, be f to be honest. Um, when you think Takawo Terewiti, who's my great-grandfather's great-grandfather, stood on Point Britomart in September 18, 1840, and gave the 3,000 acres, not this, <coughs> where we're sitting, to Governor Hobson um, for the hoped-for partnership, alliance, mutually beneficial, we we ran everything here at that time. Um, we clearly don't at the moment, but we, um, um, so we have a long way to go, not to run everything, but to um, have more say um, so that our people can also enjoy the fruits of uh, this land, this harbour, the Waitamata, uh, that many other people clearly have enjoyed. Um, so we've got a lot of, a lot of work to do. Speaking of the harbour, um, I remember when we spoke back a few years ago, the topic of um, a waterfront stadium was, was big in the news, like it sometimes is in Auckland. Um, you were quite keen on the idea, I seem to recall. It's gone a bit quiet again. Um, do you still fancy one? Well, um, my older brother, well, we've got two older brothers. One of them, um, he's on the Eden Park Trust Board. He's not here tonight, by the way. He's, 
he's at the rugby. <laughs> um, but I wore blue tonight in honour of that. Okay. Uh, so Ngati Fatu is in my DNA, so is rugby. Um, but in reality, the, uh, the waterfront stadium idea um, is just one of different uh, ways that we can enliven uh, the waterfront and get rid of that 77 hectares of uh, a monstrosity uh, of a car park that's there now. If it's not a rugby stadium, it's got to be something else. Yeah, well, bring it on. <laughs> um, and look, if it isn't that in the short or long term, um, is there, and I suppose you've been answering this question all through our conversation, but you know, is there a legacy you'd like to leave from all this work you're doing? I know you're still young, but it's, it's a long journey. Um, I have no other legacy other than to not stuff it up. Um, good ambition. I don't want to be the ancestor <laughs> in three generations' time where they are doing mihi mihis and they do the papa and then they skip me for the next <laughs> one. No, no. Um, I want a carving in the, over there in that part of the meeting house. So what I'm saying, I guess, is um, my legacy any of our legacy is, is Ngāti Whātua, who are here tonight, is to just add to what has been built on uh, by those before us. And uh, if we can do that, even if it's uh, keeping it the same and only going up a little bit, ka pai tenda. Yeah. It's a good rule to live by, to live in fear and judgment of generations yet to be born. <laughs> um, congratulations again, Narimu Blair, everybody.